Hey folks, this is Johnny, and here's a question that comes from the HST-Home Studio Trainer website. Uh, someone was asking uh, about creating a way so that when you create a new song, the setup of the I.O. and all of the settings of the song itself are the same every time. Real, real simple one. So let's go ahead to uh, Studio One. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new song. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the template and just the record and mix. This is a really good way to get this started. And okay, this is something we're going to fix because my mixer is running at 48. All right. So a new song starting from scratch and you want all of your I.O. set up so you don't have to do it every time. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Studio One. You're going to go to Preferences or Settings on a PC. And you're going to look for Song Setup. Boom. Just like that. All right. Let's squirrel this down a little bit here. We don't need it that large. All right. So this is the first part of this here. This is the general settings. So since my interface runs at 48, I'm going to change this to 48 so I don't get that warning at all. So now I'm going to keep the uh, resolution at 24 bit and I'm going to keep the frame rate at 25. So now these numbers are uh, reflected uh, like for the video settings and things like that. So there you go. So it's usually a good idea that we have a whole bunch of different settings. I like to keep it at the default. All right. So now the bar offset. Now, this is actually kind of neat. I like doing this with this. Uh, so for the bar offset, uh, that is the count in before the first beat. Okay. So what this is going to do is if I put this to minus one, I'm just going to go ahead and roll my mouse there. And if I hit apply, I want you to watch this here. This is going to scoot over from one, two, and it's going to say zero, one. There we go. So now we have a little bit of a four count if we have the click on before the first beat. Some people like to do this. Some people don't. I like to have four clicks before I actually start recording, especially if I'm recording to the grid. So there we go. Time pace. We're going to keep it bars and all of these other settings we're just going to keep. Now we can actually change the length of the song overall, but it really doesn't matter because you can change it afterwards. All right, so let's see the uh, stretch audio files to tempo. I'm going to leave that turned on and include effects when updating mastering file. This one's important because a lot of people actually say, well, I went to go ahead and I moved my song to the project page, but none of the effects moved. Chances are that's not clicked, but I do believe it's clicked by default. So for the metadata, you can go ahead and choose. You can choose the title. If you're doing an album, this is really nice here because then you can just put the uh, title in and then you can create all of your songs and not have to worry about that. But, you know, make sure that you understand that all of this stuff that is set up here in the uh, in the default template for new songs will be on every song. Of course, you can change it later, so it's no problem. You can also set the song to uh, pop up the uh, song options and or pop up. Uh, some of the settings and stuff for this, uh, for, excuse me, for the metadata. So you can go ahead and do that and you can choose a default picture for all new songs. And of course, all of this information can be changed later. So now here's the real important part. Boom. The IO setup. Now you can see, I've already got something set up here. So I'm actually going to take these. I'm going to hold shift and click the bottom one. And I'm going to say, remove, I'm going to go to the outputs. Uh, and we're going to leave that there. Okay. Now I'm going to start on the outputs because you guys might say, holy cow, what are you using? <laughs> so this is a studio live series three twenty four mixer. So we have a ton of outputs that we can use and a ton of inputs. So for me, I have studio one coming out of 37 and 38, which actually sends that to the tape ins on the mixer so that I can monitor studio one while I'm using other inputs for other instruments on the mixer itself. If you have just a two channel interface, you're only going to have an option for two. Just make sure that the, uh, that the output is set to stereo. That's really all you have to worry about. We'll talk about Q mixes and things in a later video. Now we're going to go to the inputs. Now, obviously, <laughs> I have a ton of inputs, but I don't, I don't always use them. 
and I have some things plugged in by default. So like some of my external modules and keyboards and things like that, I have plugged into permanent inputs on the board. But right now I'm just going to be uh, concerned with the first eight, which are the dynamic ones that I like to be able to switch around and stuff. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create mono one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you see it cascades through what's available. And the list on the left is the actual studio one inputs and the hardware ports that they're connected to. So we're just going to do it simple and do it like that. I'm just going to hit apply. Okay. So now when they light up, you know, you, hey, yeah, you can actually see, I have some microphones plugged in that are picking up my inputs right now. This is a really good way to see and to test if the inputs are actually working and linked to the appropriate hardware channels. So now what I also like to do is I like to set up a couple of stereo uh, channels or input channels so that I can use a couple of these inputs in pairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say one, two. Now, these are stereo inputs. And if you look here, it says stereo. Here it says mono. But I've got, I've got inputs one through eight. And I'm just going to double click and say stereo one. And I'm going to click on this one and say stereo, stereo two. So now these I'm going to actually link to one, two, three, and four. Because I have these on a patch bay that I can change and I don't have to go behind the mixer. So now I'm going to hit apply and patch base is something else I've got to do a video on too. Um, so now you see that I have my mono inputs. If I just have like a single mic for a guitar, a vocal and whatever else I got. And I have a set of stereo inputs all set and ready. If I got a stereo keyboard or something that I actually want to plug in as a pair for left and right. So now that's all set. So now let's see, where else are we going to go with this? Uh -huh. So uh, the import and export of templates, I'm going to show that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. All right. So we've already actually added the uh, mono tracks. We've added the stereo tracks and we can do the add and remove as we need. All right. So down here are the real important ones. So now what we can do is go ahead and make this the default so that every time I create a new song, all of this is ready for me. So let's go ahead and say make default. And then we get this little pop up here uh, that says, do you want to make the current IO settings to default for new songs? We're going to say yes. So now every time you create a new song, it's going to be set up and ready to go for you. And again, some of the metadata information can be changed later. So just put in the basics that you know will never change, and then you can change that as you go. All right, so what is this? Reset to default. So let's say you come into a new song and you say, you know what? I really only need three inputs, and I just don't want to confuse matters, and I want to delete those, and I want to go ahead and click apply, and then okay. So now once you're done, if you realize oh my gosh, I want, I want four more inputs the way that I had them. You can click on reset to default and it will bring up the default template that you created, which is really nice. All right. So I hope you guys found that helpful and I will see you all in the next video.